It's that time again, Pixel Owners, we have the February monthly patch and some news about a previous update. So let's get into all of the fixes. Just before I get into the details, why don't you tap that subscribe button? I'm not saying you should, but you could. It's a nice time, plus you get some cool stuff and hopefully some cool content like this let you down the line. Cheers. So what are we a day later than expected? I do think Google seems to be all over the place with updates nowadays. I thought it was almost an unwritten rule that the first Monday of the month was pixel or security patch day, but it's late, doesn't matter. We're still getting it. It's all well and good because the February patch is rolling out right now. There isn't too much in terms of fixes, but there are some fixes nonetheless. It's mostly focused on connected devices this time around. So if you're using applications like Android Auto, which I've actually just started using recently as my car finally had an update to use it over automotive. And I actually must admit, I love it. I've never really used Android Auto extensively before. Well, when you're using this audio output might not come through or it might have an issue previously with a bit of desync. Basically the February 2025 patch should fix this. I'm not seeing any problems with my devices like the AA wireless when pairing my phone or when plugging in via USB-C cable. There's no skips, cuts or audio glitches, so I can only assume that the OTA has potentially resolved that now, which is great for in-car usage. This problem actually affected the Pixel 6 right through to the Pixel 9 series, so every single currently supported device. I must admit, I've not been using the Android Auto option for longer than about five days at the point of this video going live, so I can't say for certain if it's sorted out for everyone, but I'm hopeful that it will be put it that way. The second noted fix specifically with this update is for the Pixel 9 series and it's with regards to Bluetooth devices. So in some instances, and I did see this myself with gaming controllers from the likes of GameSir, is the device itself, your phone, might not be able to connect to these Bluetooth accessories well or it might not automatically reconnect with them. So you may have to set up manual pairing to connect to those accessories that you want to. I just found it really difficult. It wasn't smooth and it was often a case of having to disconnect and repair the connection, if that makes sense. That was my only solution. It was super frustrating. But the February patch should resolve this for the Pixel 9, the 9 Pro, the 9 Pro XL, and the 9 Pro Fold. You'll have to let me know if this was fixed for you because there are hundreds of Bluetooth controllers out there and I'm only testing it on a few. And for the most part, it seems to have fixed itself but I can't say for certain, at least at this point in time. There is also only one security vulnerability resolved with this update as well. This is a really light patch after a few more fixes from last month. It is available, as I note, from the Pixel 6 right through to the Pixel 9 series, as the Pixel 6 series is supported now extra for two years, if you didn't already know that. But I also want to touch quickly on a recent Pixel 4a update, which I talked about last month in the update bulletin. So basically, the 4a has an update that rolled out last month, it's still technically based on Android 13, so it's not an update in and of the OS version. That was to fix some battery problems that Google found, and Google offered those that were affected with potential issues a free battery replacement or $50 towards a new Pixel or cash equivalent in their region. I think that was a nice gesture, but with regard to the voucher or the coupon, it's, it's actually against a new phone, it's not store credit, so that's not ideal in and of itself. There are also lots of reports from people that have updated to this who are now seeing some really, really bad battery drain. In some cases I've seen online, some people's phones are dying within two hours, which is absolutely terrible. The lifespans have been affected and that is in some cases after the battery replacement, which is part of this program. So it's easy to see that the update is causing some problems. The kicker here is that Google has actually pulled all previous OTA updates, save the last patch, to fix these supposed battery issues. So if you're still using the 4A as your main device, you're gonna have to deal with some pretty bad lifespan if you update it to this OTA. Now, my personal advice would be to try a third party run like Lineage OS, which we've recently done a deep dive into over on the channel. I'll leave a link down in the description below. You will lose things like Google Wallet support right out of the gate, but I do think that might be something to try if you're intent on using the 4A as your main phone or a backup for a few more years to come. Despite the fact that 4A is almost five years old, I can kind of understand why people would be disgruntled. And to be honest, I'm actually not gonna update my 4A to this OTA for that reason. It's one of the reasons why I actually held off. It's my personal favorite Pixel, so I wanna keep that running smoothly. So I would say just tread carefully there. It is something that seems to be a problem. We don't know if Google's ever gonna fix this or if they just decided to wash their hands of it with this final update. But yeah, as for the February 2025 security patch for eligible phones, that's Pixel 6 and newer. If you haven't already, head to settings, system, software updates, and that OTA should be ready for you to download right now. Alternatively, the OTA files can be found in our guide down in the description linked below. But yeah, it's not a huge update. 
it is an update nonetheless and we wanted to share with you the details. We are expecting a bigger, bolder update next month with the regular Pixel feature drop, or I think they're called Pixel Drop now, terrible name. So stay tuned for more exciting updates next month on all eligible devices. And if you want to get a sneak peek of what's coming, go check out our QPR2 beta coverage on uh, that i'll leave that down below as well actually but cheers for watching hopefully this has helped you giving you a little bit of information as what's fixed if there's anything you have found or you've noticed since updating let us know down in the comment sections below so i was interested to see if people have had problems after updating as sometimes it introduces bugs or actually reintroduces bugs that we might have not seen before but yeah thanks for watching and i will speak to you later